Hello and welcome back to Minecraft How To. I'm just heading back from some exploring. But once I get back, I thought we'd cover off some transportation methods. Or at least item transportation methods. Because let's get you started on some automation of those chests and all your items. So, in vanilla, you have your hopper, and you have dispensers, which are your primary source of transporting items, but modded adds a lot more. Much like the previous episode, I'm going to be covering off various different methods for transporting their items, and the mods that provide them. These may or may not be available in your mod pack. However, they should give you a basic item transportation early on in the game. Some mods have extra features, some mods are just for transportation, and I'll get to those in a moment. So let's get started. We'll now head up to our testing area. We're going to start with a mod called Bullcraft. Bullcraft is probably one of the first mods that added in the concept of item transportation. It provides multiple different pipes for this purpose. What we're going to start off doing is transporting our items out using a wooden transport pipe. You'll see here the big, big filled in area indicates which chest or inventory the items will be sucked out of. We're then going to place some stone transport pipes and we will place a chest for the items to go into. If we put some example stuff in there, you can see I put some coal in. It will not currently do anything. This is because the wooden transport pipe requires power. You can use any of the power methods we discussed in the last, last episode. Or you can use Bullcraft's own energy source called the engine. In this case, we're going to use a redstone engine, which produces very little power at all, but it is enough to power the pipe. In order to get the engine to work, all you have to do is give it a redstone signal, such as a lever or a redstone torch. Switching it down, you'll see that it starts animating to show that it's, putting, it's powering the pipe. You'll also see that the coal has been transported from the chest along the pipe in a very visual form, but very slowly, into our crystal chest. And there it is there. Now Bullcraft does add other types of pipe. Another type of pipe it adds is the cobblestone pipe. Both the stone and the cobblestone pipe work very similar to each other and have the same speed. However, you can run a cobblestone pipe along next to a stone pipe and it will not connect. However, we run it from there, it will connect. So as you can see, It'll connect up, but it won't connect to the stone transport pipe. This can be handy if you need to run two different item lines, or two different lines of items, to two different chests right next to each other. However, you did see that it's quite slow to transport items. As you get further on, and you get yourself a collection of gold, you can also run a golden transport pipe. And now, placing an item here will go much faster. It'll take a little while to extract, but once it hits the golden pipe, it'll speed up until it ends up in the chest.
but that's not all there is. There is also iron transport pipes, which are designed to keep items flowing in a, a certain direction. Uh, for example, if we placed a stone pipe here, you'll see that the, the golden transport pipe will connect to it. Now what will happen in this case is the coal, when the, item, when the coal gets to, or an item gets to that place, it'll choose a random direction to go to. In this case it went up and it threw the item out. This is not always what you want, so you can set up routing so that the pipe goes in a different direction. Once again we use our handy dandy wrench, we can change the direction that it goes so that the items will only will never go back along the filled inside. So once again we test it and you'll see that it will go through. It will never go up here because that's filled in and it will never go backwards. This allows you of course if you wanted to you could have a, quite a number of connected piping from various different chests and various locations, all connecting in the same main pipeline. If we were, for example, to change it so that it goes at the top, you'll see that it will pipe, uh, pipe the item out of the top. So the iron transport pipe allows you to change the direction or stop an item for flying in a specific direction. However, that might not also be what you want. There is also a sorting version of the pipe, which is a diamond pipe. Now this of course is much more expensive, but we can say that by using our wrench we can click on the edge and you'll be presented with all these colours. We could choose to send a our coal down the white path, which would be up, but our cobblestone transport pipe along the red path, which would be along the gold path. So if I place an item into here, so we place our coal in here, and we place a cobblestone transport pipe in here, they will both go in separate directions because that's what we've told them to do. Not selecting it. Uh, not selecting an uh, loca or put it in, placing an item in the thing which it doesn't know about. For example, we'll use a torch. We'll choose an a side that does not have a direction currently. If it cannot route it, it will spit it out onto the ground. You can of course place multiple items in by clicking there and it will send all the items in that direction. There are other pipes that Bullcraft provides, but that's a quick rundown of what's available. This is a very good mod for starting out, And if you've got diamonds, it's even better for creating a sorting system very quickly. The next system we're going to discuss is from Extra Utilities, which provides transfer nodes and pipes. So we'll place a transfer node, which will extract items. There is also a retrieval node, which will retrieve items. We'll place a collection of pipe and our destination chest. In this case, it'll immediately start extracting items. And it'll place them over here. This is a very short distance, so this is quite a, lot, quite a quick process. However, right clicking on the transfer node allows you to install speed upgrades, stack upgrades, and various other upgrades related to extra utilities. 
So now, if we were to test it again, it'll be even much, it'll be much faster. The transfer node does give a little bit of information about what it's doing and how it's processing. If you have a very long cable, it may take quite some time for it to find the destination it's going to. In which case, once again, right clicking, will show the item it's currently transporting, and it can only transfer one at a time. And you saw, very quickly, searching inventory at indicates where it's looking to transport items to. You can have multiple locations for it to go to, and there are additional tra uh, transfer pipe types. But I won't cover these just yet. The next mod we're going to look at is from a mod called Endor.io. We discussed quickly, we discussed briefly, Endor.io in the previous episode. But it uses conduits called on item conduits, which you can connect to your chest and then place onto a destination chest. It gives you a quick outline of what it's doing. For example, the green arrow here indicates that it's sending items, it's extracting items. And the green arrow here also indicates it's extracting items. If you right click on the grey piece at the side, you'll be given the option of extract, insert, disabled, in and out. In this case, we want insert. You can choose colours, which allows you to say that the that the pipe extracting a red colour or channel can only go to red coloured inventories. So you could use the same main line and have something inputting into one chest and extracting on that same cable out to another location. In this case, we're just going to leave it a green, and we'll leave it at a default priority. But if we now place the item here, you also notice it doesn't extract the item directly. You need to change the mode. When on extract, there's your channel. You need to say the redstone mode is active without a signal or, um, or always active. You can also use a redstone conduit to provide these signals on the color listed here. You'll now see that it has extracted the coal and placed it here. If we do this again, you'll see it's much quicker to extract it and place it here. As I showed in the previous episode, you can hide these cables, as well as merge them with power cables, redstone conduits, and various other types of cable or conduit from the same mod. I'm not going to cover or recover that here, but it is a very powerful system, and does allow for also additional upgrades to be inserted to provide basic filtering capabilities. I also covered in the previous episode a mod called Thermal Expansion and Thermal Dynamics. Thermal Dynamics is the cabling portion of the mod pack. And in this case, it provides an item duct and a normal chest and a servo. The servo is responsible for extracting items. So placing a servo on the chest allows you to right click on the servo to give it a whitelist and blacklist and to set how it's configured, allowing you to you can choose a redstone signal such as ignored, which will extract immediately, low, requiring no signal, and high, requiring a signal. So in this case, we'll set it to ignored, which means that it doesn't require a redstone signal at all to operate. You'll note that when it's active, you can see that the color has changed slightly to a lighter colour. I'll turn it off again so you can see. 
and scheme we place our coal and we'll extract it and you can see it flowing through the pipes Thermal Dynamics provides a lot more piping methods, including fast options, round robin, and various different selections for its chests. This is the basic setup, and you can play with it more to understand how it works. Another very recent mod, in fact, so recent it's been only just been shown off in the Horizons pack is Refined Relocation. Refined Relocation provides a relocator pipe, which, like every other mod, attached to your chest and will send it to another chest. In this case, it, it provides modules. So, you place an extractor module on there. And it'll extract the items from this chest and place it into the next available chest. For example, here's our coal, and you can see it quickly going across near this side. I'll show it again so you can see it. You can choose, if you right click on the item, you can choose how quickly it extracts and what it does about redstone signals and what size of the stack it will request at once. Holding down your shift key and right clicking will remove the module. However, it also provides other modules which can be connected to the pipe, such as in this case, a crafting pipe, a crafting module, which if we connect to here, we can now choose to make a crafting recipe. For example, if we wanted to make a button every, uh, from every piece of coal, every piece of stone, placing it in here, as it runs through the system, it'll craft and then place the result into the, through the pipe next. As you can see, we now have a button. The last mod we're going to cover off today is an extension of the Buildcraft pipes, which provides a built-in sorting system, as well as some other auto crafting systems not provided by many of the other mods shown here. This mod is Logistic Pipes. Logistics Pipes requires RF to power a collection of pipes and can interact with many inventories and crafting tables. The first thing of course you'll need will be some form of power, RF power. You can see here I've run, already run some energy conduits from Endo.io up the wall and we will connect the logistics power junction to the wall. We will then need to connect a basic logistics pipe to the power junction. This will then connect up the all the pipes connecting to it to the network. So if we then connect that to there, now every single pipe here is connected. One thing to note however is that iron transport pipes and diamond transport pipes do not work with this system. So I'll just replace this one here as well. Now, all this pipe here is doing is providing power. However, if we get rid of our redstone engine and our wooden transport pipe, and we place a chassis pipe here, if we reach the pipe, we can insert a module here. In this case, I'm going to insert an extractor module, which will extract from the connected chest. In some versions of the system pipes, this will extract everything into the pipe network, which will then, of course, spit things out where there is 
nowhere for the items to go. In new versions, it looks like they've fixed this problem. We also need to place a basic logistics pipe on any, any inventory that we want to have accepting items. Right clicking the pipe will bring up the request items. So if we wanted to request coal, we can place the coal in there and then insert coal into here and it will automatically extract it and pipe it into this chest. If however you wanted to you have items that you don't know where they're going to go, you can use the default route option. This will send all items that are unknown through the pipes. And you can see that it's requesting items from the chest and sending it through the network to put them into here. And for some reason it spit that out. Ah. Another thing to be careful of is that the same routing logic from Bullcraft still applies. So if you have a T intersection as we did before, it'll choose it will choose a direction at random. To avoid this, you need the smarts from logistics pipes to tell it the way to go. To do this, just replace that pipe where the T junction is with a logistics pipe. Logistic pipe. This will then, when it get, the item gets there, the pipe will go, hey, you're meant to go in this way or this way. So we'll also do this up here. Basically, anywhere you have a T junction where items may go through, you should do this. And now, any items that are inserted from here will automatically be extracted and placed into the chest over here. Quite a cool feature. But it does get better. Because that's pretty much what we saw in all these other mods. Another cool feature, however, is that you can do you can place a provider pipe on a inventory connect it to your system obviously that's not going to work you'll see it'll connect a provider pipe allows access to the contents of this chest so if I was now to place a request logistics pipe, let's say here, and hit it with a wrench, you can now see the items in the chest. You can also request the items and how many do you want. And you'll see, for me, four coal. Now for one, sta one chest, that's pretty boring. But, if we were to grab our other chest from over here, and we connect another provider pipe up to it, let's place the items that fell out, some of the other stuff we don't need, into that chest. If we then request this, uh, hit the pipe again, you'll see that both chests are now shown. This provides infinite access to your inventories. Right, I've been a little busy and I've set up a little storage room underneath our base, which we'll get into some mods in a future episode, which will fill up all the items here. However, you'll note that I've used logistics pipes as the transport method. In this case, I've used Logistic Chassis Mark II. This allows us to install two modules. The modules I've installed are the Provider module 
which works the same as the provider pipe, and an item sync module, which works the same as the basic logistics pipes. This means we only need to have one pipe connected to the inventory. You'll see that on the corner here, I have a pipe coming down. It comes down from where I was demoing the pipes earlier. Because it's a T-junction, as I mentioned earlier, I've placed a basic logistics pipe on the T-junction so that it can route the items accordingly. So every single chest has one of these chassis pipes on it. A tip for if you're working with bulk modules is hold them in your hand and right click. If you're clicking in the middle of nowhere, you can then configure the whole stack in one go. For example, I've set the ones in my hand to be default route. This works for any module, including provider modules, and any other modules you can install into chassis pipes. How about we start using it? We'll place a Mark II pipe here. And right clicking on the chassis pipe with a module will automatically insert the module into the pipe. So we'll insert that in there, come down here, and you should see that the items are now flowing through the pipes. I've also taken the time to install some crafting logistic pipe and some logistics crafting table. These allow you to configure inputs and outputs for certain devices. For example, this pipe is configured to take in a birch wood and it will it should expect to get four birchwood planks. What it does with this is place it into the connected inventory, which is the logistics crafting table. This may also be a furnace or any other device which could take items. This then allows you, if we go and request something, for example, I've installed a request table as well, which allows you to see everything in your item as well as craft things. You can see that if I click on craft, I have already set up an iron pickaxe to be crafted. As I've already got the the items for this, if I was to request Three hundred and forty virtual planks, which will import and stick into the inventory here. Go back down to one. I can now request to make an iron pickaxe. You'll note that it says zero birchwood planks and zero sticks. However, if I go request, it will create it. And it's already made it. You'll note that it's already created. It's also created two sticks and two birchwood planks. This is because crafting birchwood makes four planks, and four planks makes four sticks. Uh, two th two planks makes four sticks. There are other mods that are more impressive than this, which can fit into a much smaller space. But this one works really well for a cheap, early game mechanic. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode and learned, learned something. If you did, please leave a like. If you want to make, uh, see more of these videos in the future, 
please subscribe to my channel. And if you want me to make a video about something else, or would like more detail about how these mods work, please leave a comment. But for now, have a great day, and see ya!